Hey, how's it going, guys? So here we have the semifinals match of the Fire and Dice Invitational that happened this weekend. Uh, on our right, we have Josh Hart or John. Wait, no, Josh Hartman. Sorry, I mixed that up for like two seconds. <laughs> and on our left, we have Ricky. Uh, Josh is playing Vikivo Bulu, and uh, Ricky is playing Espion Garb. Um, both of these decks are really, really good decks in the format right now. Uh, Espeon hits uh, lots of things like Buzzwall, it hits like uh, Lucario, and Bikavolt Vulu is really good because it hits 210 and that knocks out Zoarks and uh, Espeons, and it, it pretty much does uh, some really good, it hits some really good numbers. Uh, so we see that Ricky did start off, he did get a Bridget with no Lele, uh, so he does open up two Trubbish and an Eevee. They get an energy on an, another Eevee that he had active and turned it into an Espeon. And finally benches down one last Trubbish to end this turn. Uh, looks like Ricky's trying to get as many Trubbishes out because he knows that he needs to uh, shut off abilities as quickly as possible. Uh, John Hartman opens up with a Nespa and an energy on a Tapu Bulu and that will be the end of his turn. Uh, we see an, a very explosive start from Ricky. He does get uh, a Garbotoxin and a Trash Lanch uh, Garbodor out and another Espeon with an energy evolution. Uh, ready to go uh, he finally and he finally goes and plays Cynthia so he will be drawing six cards uh, he just needs to get an energy on that Garbotoxin and that's pretty much gonna like win him the game and there it is uh, he ends up putting a an item a tool on that um, Garbotoxin and he's doing 30 damage on this uh, Grubbin uh, Josh Hartman puts an energy on Bulu places in a uh, an Orangaroo and pass his turn. Uh, Ricky uh, puts a DC on his Espeon and gets a knockout. Uh, so Josh Hartman does have the energy um, on top of Bulu ready to attack. Uh, he did do Field Blower, so he does get his abilities back. And he ends up attacking. Does not get rid of the energy. Um, I think he's saving that for his GX attack so then we, when he does take a hit he, he'll be able to heal. We see Ricky put a DC on the Espeon on the bench. We do see an Ultra Ball from Ricky. Uh, goes for another Garbotoxin. Uh, I guess he's trying to get two Garbotoxins up and running so it's kind of harder for uh, Hartman to deal with that. And we see a Sycamore so he is going to draw seven cards. Uh, we see another we see another tool go down on another Garbotoxin, so abilities are shut off again. Uh, he does 30 damage and confuses it. Uh, so Ricky's take, playing the slow game, uh, kind of allowing his opponent to um, roll a dice and see if his attacks go through. Um, he does uh, nature's he uses nature's judgment, so he does heal that damage. Um, We see Ricky looking at his discard pile because he's using Super Rod. Going to bring back uh, two energies. I think one energy, a Tapolele, and an Eevee. And we see a Cynthia. It's very interesting how these decks run. Like They're, they're both very equally matched. Um, Top of Bulu doing like a ton of damage for the amount of energy that it has. Uh, we do see uh, the Top of Bulu does get knocked out because of Choice Pan. Uh, so Hartman does bring up uh, Orangaroo and plays Cynthia. So he's going to shuffle up and draw six cards. We see him play a Grubbin, places an energy on it, and passes turn. We see an Espeon. We see a Choice Pen on that Espeon. Uh, uses his GX move, does 60 to the bench and 30 to the active. Uh, 
And Harmon scoops it up, uh, realizing that it's going to be very hard for him to come back. And seeing that Ricky was pretty much set up, so he scoops it up to conserve time, which is really good. Uh, very smart thing to do on his part. No point in uh, like prolonging it if you already know you're going to lose. So yeah, so Ricky ended up winning the last match that I was able to record against Tony. It was very close. Um, Ricky's only been playing for this year from what I'm aware of. So for him to come along this far along, it's really good uh, to see. Uh, it just goes to show, like, as long as you put in the work and you practice, 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 and play, and you do your research, uh, you pretty much can become a really good player. Uh, Ricky, I know that I met Ricky, like, maybe, like, a couple months ago. I think, like, maybe two or three months ago at a Locals, and he, he didn't know much. Like, he was, like, a beginner, beginner. And to see him come along this far, it's it's very motivational. Not for me, obviously, because I've been around for a while. <laughs> but it's motivational for other players, you know, to kind of just stick through it, keep practicing, and you can you can make top eight, uh, well, top four at the Fire and Dice Invitational. But yeah, um, so Hartman does start start in the Rangaroo. Uh, we do see an Eevee and a Trubbish from uh, Ricky. Uh, we see Hartman's going to go with Tapolele, probably going to start with a Bridget and bring out some uh, Pokemon on the bench, maybe a Bulu and some Grubbins. There's Bridget. Oh, what will you be selecting? Oh, he got a Skyla. I, I guess he didn't get uh, Bridget. Uh, so Skyla for Grubbin. That's not too great. That That's kind of unfortunate. Um, I don't know. Maybe he has a rare candy. And that's the reason why uh, he's choosing to go this route instead of the Bridget route. But even if he had rare candy, like Bridget would have been great as well. Uh, so he does play an energy on Lele and pass his turn. We do see an energy evolution from Ricky. So he is going to get an SP on and he is going to be able to be uh, to do 30 damage right now. Uh, we see a float stone come down under Trubbish. As soon as he gets that Garbotox now, it's going to be really hard for Hardman to come back. So uh, hopefully that float stone isn't too preemptively. -um pre so we do see uh, Lele, and we are going to see a Bridget uh, for an Orangaroo, an Eevee, and a Trubbish. Ricky knows that he needs to have at least two Trubbishes on the board at all times uh, for Garbotoxin to do what it needs to do. Uh, so he does do 30 damage and pass his turn after he does an Instruct. Uh, we see a Choice Ban and another Energy come to a Lele. Harmon plays a Sycamore, so he is drawing seven cards. You are going to see a Nest Ball. Uh, he goes for a Bulu. Come on, Harmon. Uh, I guess he was going to do something else, but he decided not to go with it. And he ends up passing. Ah, oh, that's not good. Uh, so Ricky ends up getting an energy for his Espeon uh, and plays N. So that's actually very fortunate for Hartman. He's going to be able to reshuffle that hand that he kind of was stuck with last turn. He didn't really make any big moves. He just added energies on a Lele and brought down a Bulu with a Nest Ball. Uh, he, I don't think he played a supporter for the turn. So yeah, um, hopefully he gets a better hand out of this. And he's able to to play, uh, to start evolving his uh, his Grubbins. So Ricky did draw some cards off that end. He does get a field blower, getting rid of that uh, choice band from the Lele. 
We do see another 30 damage on Oranguru, and he ends up passing the turn. Uh, Harmon plays another Bulu. I don't think that was a very wise move on Harmon's behalf because now his bench is full. So if he gets a Lele, he won't be able to use it um, to get the necessary supporter that he needs. So yeah, so I don't know if that was the best move, but hopefully it, it hopefully it pays out as the turn or as the match continues. So he did play Cynthia. He's gonna draw six cards. Uh, we do see rare candy, so we finally get to see a Vicable in action, which is gonna be very good for Hartman. Hopefully, this gives him that cutting edge that he needs to kind of get out of this position that he's in. Uh, he ends up putting a lightning energy on one of the Bulus that already had a grass energy and another grass energy on the new Bulu that he played down. Um, and he ends up passing. Uh, so he plays Parallel City, gonna reduce Hartman's bench to three. So now uh, he has to make a very tough decision. Does he get rid of the Lele that has two energies or does he get rid of the Bulu that has the one energy on it? He's gonna go with the Bulu that has the one energy on it. Uh, I guess he wants to keep the energy that he already committed to the Lele because he already put in the work for it, I guess. Now we see uh, Trash Lanch Garbador come down on Ricky's side. We see Ultra Ball. He's going to get rid of Psychic Energy. And a Cynthia. Goes for the Garbotoxin. So now Garbotoxin's up and running. Uh, this is not good for Hartman. Unless he has Fuel Blower in his hand, uh, he's not going to have any ability. So that Bickleball isn't doing anything for him. Uh, so he does another 30. And this Oranguru is one hit away from being knocked out. Uh, Hartman's turn. We do see Fuel Blower gets rid of that Choice Fan Floatstone off of that Garbotoxin and that uh, um, that Espeon. And we do see Hartman playing Energy on Oranguru plus Power Charge or Strong Charge. And then he does play an Energy on that other Bulu. So he is going to manual retreat this Oranguru and then try to get a knockout on that Espeon. Uh, he's going to need a Choice Fan to be able to knock it out with a one shot. Uh, so we're going to see if he's able to get that off of this end that he just played. Harman looking at his cards a little a little too long, so it might be that he didn't get the choice ban, uh, which is going to be very unfortunate. So he does go with the retreat. Brings up Bulu. And commits to attacking and gets rid of the energy on his Bulu. Right, so we do see an ener another tool come down on the Garbotoxin. We do see a Cynthia from Ricky. So he's going to shuffle up, draw six cards. We see an energy on that trash lunch. And 30 and confused. We see Guzma, he does bring up Espeon. And he does 60 damage to it with energy drive. So we see Guzma again uh, from, we see Guzma from Ricky. We see him put a DC on the SPL on the bench that has less damage. 
and he does 30 damage to the active Pokemon. We see Guzma again from Hartman. <laughs> uh, we do see Fieldblower gets rid of the Float Stone and that Parallel City. Um, the Espeon does have three energies on it, plus the uh, the two on Lele, so it is doing 100 damage. Uh, we we're seeing a strong charge from. We're seeing Ultra Ball. And he goes for a Mew, which is really good. This is actually going to hopefully turn this match around uh, for Hartman. Uh, that Mew is able to copy anything, any basic Pokemon on on Hartman's side. So he's able to do uh, Tapu Bulu's attacks, plus hitting for a weakness on these Espeons and Garbodors. So that's going to be really, really good. But that, uh, that Espeon does have energy on it, enough for the GX. So that's probably what we're going to see from Ricky right now, uh, just to get rid of the threat of the Mew. Um, unfortunately, this Espeon is going to go down, but he's already in a really great position where it doesn't matter if this Espeon does go down. Uh, looks like Ricky did not get a tool for his Garbotoxin. Uh, he's retreating uh, to save the the Espeon, which is very interesting. And he ends up attacking the Lele. Doesn't have enough to knock it out, but does put damage on it Ricky might be going for like a flashy move because that Espeon can use this GX and do 10 damage anywhere on the board uh, if I remember correctly Mew has 50 and then there's 30 left on Orangaroo so that's two prizes there and then there's two left and that might be the two that's needed to knock out this Lele uh, I can't really tell how much damage is there but yeah, Hartman still has energies, or still can get energies because his abilities are up and running. He ends up not getting anything with his Ultra Ball. We see Choice Band on Bulu. We see Instruct, and we see 60 damage uh, from Energy Drive. Let's see a DC on the Espeon. We see Guzma brings up Vicovolt. Uh, goes for the GX move. So gets a knockout on the Lele and on the Ranguru and puts the remainder amount on the Bulu with the energy. So we see Skyla, he does get Energy Recycler, so he's going to throw energies back into his deck. It's going for all Grass Energies. Must mean that hopefully he has some Electrics in there. If he committed 5 Grass Energies. So we see Strong Charge, one energy on the Bulu, and that's it. I guess he, I guess he didn't want to bring back Grass uh, Electric Energies for whatever reason. Uh, we see Guzma does bring up that Bulu, and does get a straight knockout off of it. We see Fueblor gets rid of that Choice Fan, and this is pretty much gonna sum it up. Uh, there's. There's not much that um, that Hartman can do. He can strong charge, but he has no electric energies. If he had brought back electric energies, he can like strong charge and then play an energy. But even so, like he still gets like one shotted. So yeah. So that's pretty much the match right there. It was kind of unfortunate that uh, Hartman wasn't able to set up his board. His board did look a little. Um, not not where it needed to be you know uh as for ricky ricky did a good job uh took his time uh there was a couple chances where he could have used this gx a little earlier but he decided to wait on that so that was pretty good on his behalf so yeah 
Guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to share the video for anybody that's interested in seeing what semifinals looked at the Fire and Dice Invitational. With that said, guys, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.